Hello folks, back once again. Um, I'm going to actually like this part two of the evolution of tone. And the reason for that is simply because the last one I figured out that the audio interface, plugging it directly into uh, the guitar, it only picks up the signal from the guitar. And it was not picking up the signal from the PV Revolver 4 down here. So what I'm doing now is I'm running the audio, all the audio from my input device, that is from my, um, the audio interface, which is a Behringer Euphoria UMC 204 HD. And I'm running that into traction here. And uh, I've got one side, as you can see, the meter's peaking here for that. And that is the vocal. And for this next is going to be the guitar. Now, when I bring this all together, it looks like there's two waveforms, but hopefully I can smooth all this stuff out here. So what you just heard is the Revalver 4 as a plug-in. So it's going through a plug-in. Here's what the Revalver 4 looks like. Now, unfortunately, I can't do the gig mode in here because this is not within the actual PV um, app. This is the plug-in. So I'll have to sort through my presets one by one. And right now I'm on what I consider to be my favorite preset. And we talked about amps and things like that in the last video. And amps have a huge advantage in the evolution of tone, in trying to find your tone. Okay, and I'm not going to go back over a lot of that because I covered that in the last video. What we have here is the PV Triple X, and I'm using it as my power tone. And I'm going to kind of go through and tweak all these knobs like we did before. This is my favorite tone so far, and uh, it just has that nice crunchy sound. It has a it has the nice um, Paul Gilbert esque tone to it that I really like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this down so that it stays in place even while I'm recording. And if I click on other things, and uh, so let's let's listen to this and tweak some sounds and everything so you can get an idea of what all is going on here. Here's what it sounds like just as it is. Uh, set up. Switching up some pickups here. Dial it down a little bit. Now, if I dial it back too much, the noise gate will start kicking in and uh, it, it'll start losing some of the tone. So, I want to make sure I pick harder, even if I'm dialing my volume back. Okay, so some very nice tones with this amp. Now let's uh, go through the different channels here and listen to what the difference is. So here's lead.
Okay, so that's lead. Let's do some clean. And I'm, um, I've heard and I've actually listened to the clean on a triple X amp, and it has some amazing clean tones. So let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> Nice clean tones. Let's go back up to the lead here and mess around with the presence and resonance knobs. Okay, very nice tones on that as well. And you can, it really cleans up the bottom end if you take some of that resonance out, which is uh, more of that woofy, uh, boomy sound, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in, a, in a lower kind of bass tone. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch through these different cabinets, and I'm gonna switch through the microphones, and I'm also gonna mess with the uh, cone placement here so that we can get an idea of what those sounds have uh, as well. Right now we're on a 6505 prototype 412. Now I was reading the manual to this earlier and it said that even sometimes you might want to try out a, um, a smaller cabinet for lead solos. Um, seems like, it, I guess it tightens up the, the sound of it, I'm not sure, but uh, if I was to switch this to a, a smaller uh, 1x12 or 2x12 even, if I can find one that's not a demo so it won't beep at us, Okay, so that's a demo. So let's find us another uh, 2 by 12 here. There's a Delta Blues. Let's see what it sounds like with that one. It's a 2 by 10 here. A lot more muddy and muffled. I don't really care for that one too much. Let's try 112 here. So for me, I mean, I like where it was. And I can, I can find other ones as well. We can go to different other cabinets and I can go for uh, 112 here. Close or open back. Of course, that's a demo, so it beeps at us, so we can't really record with it. So we want something we can actually use. So to me, for my sound, for my preference, the best sound is what I had it on, which is 6505 prototype 412 cabinets. Okay, so to me that sounds a whole lot better uh, than what it did before. So now we've done the different placements of the cabs, let's try to find different microphones. Uh, for one thing, there's these um, off-axis, you've got the um, proximity and the gain as well that you can use. And those are kind of hard to read, I know, but I just bear with me. The gain is how loud you want the, the microphone to be turned up so that it receives the amp signal. Proximity is how far away you want it to be from the amp. And the off bias, or excuse me, off axis, is instead of having the microphone straight on, going with the diaphragm going directly into the, the cone, it's turned slightly at an angle. So let's hear what it sounds like with this same microphone but uh, we're going to kind of change it up a little bit with those frequencies and those uh, options there.
Obviously, you know, that's uh, how loud the, the uh, microphone is. So let's go back up to where that was. It said at 4.3, I think. Okay, let's do the proximity here, how far away it is. So that's farther away now. Let's move it closer. Let's go back to where we were. It was about center. Let's go back and move it closer. This is probably going to sound a lot more muffled. Okay, so that's a little too in your face. It's uh, not catching all the different frequencies that are bouncing around. It's a little too close to the cone. Now, I noticed that off axis here allows us to um, kind of make the the microphone and the sound of the cabinet sound a little bit less woofy, a little bit less bassy, and it kind of adds a little bit of treble to it. So even if I didn't touch that presence knob up here, uh, which I think it was back here earlier, even if I didn't touch that, listen to the difference when I put it on off, off axis here. Okay, so there's a lot going on there, a lot of different things happening. So let's change the microphone here now. First of all, let's remember where we was at, 4148, and right directly over that, 75 hertz. This is the frequency of the cutoff if we want the low pass to be going through. So I could even cut off more of that and put it on a 150 uh, hertz cutoff, cardioid pattern. <laughs> And that takes out a lot of those lows as well. So let me go back and you can hear the difference there. Quite a bit bassier. So let's find something else here. Let's find us another one. Well, we try an SM57 classic. Sounds pretty close to what we had. How about an SM58, more of a vocal mic? Takes out a lot of those lows, because the human voice don't really need a lot of the lows, so that's where we're hearing that uh, removal of that. Some low cut mid cuts and just a regular SM7. So if we, we want a scooped sound, we can cut the mids out here. And if we want the lows and the mids out, we can do that as well, low mid cut. All kinds of different things we can come up with here. There's a figure eight pattern. So there's all kinds of things we could do with this as well. How about an off axis figure eight? Now that would be interesting. Okay, so there's all kinds of different things we could do with this. So I'm going to go back to what we had it on, which was that 75 hertz cartoid. Now let's try Omni. So this is from all directions. I want to turn that down a little bit, but we'll just go back to what we had, which is the cartoid. Okay, now the next thing to do is to work on the actual placement of the mic. And I noticed this changes depending on like what amp you have selected and all that. Maybe these are the sweet spots for each different cabinet. All right, so maybe if I changed another cabinet, it would, it would change the placement as well. Yeah, see all this? Those are all the sweet spots that are more familiar with the cabinets here. So this was a 65 prototype. 4x12, what does a regular 6505 sound like here? Way too high for me, so we're going to go back to what we was at. Just has a better balance for this combination. And if you're wondering what this RIR2 is, basically when you click on anywhere in the empty spot of the modules here, it tells you it's the cabinet modeler. 
the emulator. Okay, so you got a light version, a regular version, and just RIR. Okay, there's a different kinds here. There's a high performance, real time, full range. All these are high performance, real time, full range, and all this. I don't know what the difference are with a lot of them, so I could just put that there if I wanted to and have a different cabinet, you know, emulated somehow. Okay, so you know, that fattened it up. I don't know what it did to it, but it fattened it up. Okay, so all these kind of different options you can do here. So I'm just going to delete that. Now let's place the mic around a little bit. Remember, it's in the center of the cone. So let's go around a little bit more. So I'm just going to play some stuff and move around as I do. <laughs> Was the inner ones let's try some of the outer ones here i'm not sure if i've done this one or not we'll try it And back to the center okay so there's all kinds of different things we could have on these cabinets here and uh, not to mention we also have some other effects here I've got some stomp boxes and things so I can put a course on this if I wanted to I could put some uh, phaser on here Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff I could do. And also, this is a compressor here. I could go over here to the effects rack and see what we got going on here. We've got a flanger, a little bit of a flanger going on, some reverb here, and some tap or some delay with a little bit of modulation and ambience. Now, I don't think the ambience is on, but I did notice that there is an ambience uh, setting here, and it says it's on. So little details like that uh, might make a big difference to you if you want to work around with that. Let's move on some other uh, amp models here, and we will go to, oh, and the cool thing about the Revalver amp here, the app, is I can actually tell it to override with any settings I wanted to. So I quick save it and override all the settings, or I can just go back to my presets and try something else. So let's look at a few more here, and like I said, this is basically a rehash of what I did before, so there's not a whole lot of need to go on over different things, too many different things. So here's one uh, called Dozens of Gallons of Gain. So let's see what that sounds like. So 
that's got quite a bit of heftiness to it. If we go to uh, the other channel, it's, it's more of a clean channel, but it has a little bit of crunch still. Oh, yeah, it's more of a, uh, yeah, rhythm kind of uh, deal there. There's got resonance, resonance and presence on both of these. Uh, go back to the other, actually we can do a bright sound, sounding channel for this. More of a crunch sound. Or all out lead. Okay, so a lot of different things we could do with that one. There's a noise gate happening here. Also have compressor, a uh, tube screamer emulator, and more of a bluesy drive here. And for the effects, we've got the another you know, a noise gate here happening with the C verb as well. And I, like I said in the previous video, the cool thing about this is I can use this interaction. I can delete the noise gate or keep the noise gate. I can delete all the amps, all the cabinets, and choose the stomp boxes that I want or need. And if traction or your DAW doesn't have the reverb or effects that you'd like to have, perhaps you'd like to have the uh, effects that tra that uh, the PV Revalver comes with because it's got an awesome slew of effects for, for pretty much free. I think this is the producer pack, which is normally $99, but I got it for free with the PV Viper. So there's a lot of cool stuff here that you can uh, get your hands on and I can use this reverb if I don't like any other reverb and just tack it on to uh, my track or whatever. And it uh, looks like I got another amp happening here. I think this is the Demon. See what it is? Yes, it's the Demon. So I got a lot of stuff happening there. There's a little bit of a chorus. Effects wise, we got the noise gate and the verb again. Notice how quiet that is. That noise gate really helps. Okay, so this has got, like I said, you can fiddle with all these different buttons and knobs and everything. Um, I'm gonna go to the next preset. And I mentioned in the last video that the Boss DS1 has a little bit of a hissy sparkly sizzle effect and what i want you to notice here is this is the kind of uh, tone that i'm talking about now notice if going back to the first tone if you'll listen to that again and then compare this one you can hear that slot I mean, a really bright, sparkly sound. And that's the Boss DS1. To me, it sounds a lot like that. And I don't, I'm not really a fan of that, but it seems to work here okay. Uh, we've got some different controls here. This is kind of like a frequency, uh, or excuse me, a feedback uh, to the power section here. It says it's loosely compared to a wide band presence knob. So if I just tweak this a little bit while I play... <laughs> I'll just leave it on mid where it was. Um, we have lead rhythm and clean as well. Uh, the gain on the rhythm is way down compared to uh, the post gain on the lead. So that way we can have a uh, difference in the tone. And uh, this one was called Cascades is because it's got two delays on it. Okay, it's got a blend. This is kind of like a channel splitter, and it's got a blend of the first delay with the different presets mixed with the second delay. And I think it kind of gives it also a, a, a stereo separation. Now I can invert that, and we'll see what happens when I do that. To me, it, it pulls the sound a little bit more to the, uh, the right side of the speakers. 
and this is more balanced. Then I can blend both of those delays by moving this little blend tool here. And then as far as effects, I've got all these different ones. None of them are able to, except for the compressor. This treble booster is definitely a treble booster. Listen to this. If you don't want it that extreme, you can come down on it a little bit, maybe about three. I mean, it sounds almost uh, like those 70s, you know, distorted sounds. I don't really use that a lot, but I've decided to have one channel with a bunch of these pedals. And another thing about this is with that sizzle on top of the amp, like I said, that treble boost is just going to make that worse. So we don't really need a booster on this uh, board. So, but I'll just leave it there for now. Like I said, we've got some phaser happening. Chorus. Very subtle chorus. And there's another delay pedal over here. To me, it just adds a little bit too much delay, so I'll just leave that off. All right, so let's go with a few more presets here that I've got. Of a Valve King here. Let's see what it sounds like. little too muddy for my taste. I'm not really a, that much of a fan for this. Let's brighten that up a little bit. Now I want you to notice something, especially with this amp. The lows really get, they get muddied up and they get uh, lost in the mix. If I hold one of the low notes, you can hear it kind of dampens out. So it has that same effect that you would hear on an actual amplifier where the speaker is just going so fast or vibrating even so low that it's it's starting to fizzle out. And so that's one reason I don't particularly care for this Valve King. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and go into a, a different preset here. See one earlier that I wanted to try real quick. The Volcano. Then I'll do one more. And then a couple presets that are included with uh, PV here, just like I did in the last video. Um, and then we'll be done. So here's this one. Let's change keys. Really uh, sounds nice with that. Um, the pickups here in the middle in the bridge position. A lot of good twang to it. Okay, and we can turn the, the volume down a little bit. Sounds like it's got a noise gate in there somewhere. Most likely it does. No, this is a, a different one that I'm not really messed with a, a lot, but it's got a lot of different things here. Um, different reverbs and things like that, and it's got all these different EQs and low pass filters and tap delays and all kinds of stuff. It's called Worldwide Verb. So um, definitely check that one out as well. Over here, we've got a uh, phaser. That's what you've been hearing this whole time is that phaser, that, that low wah, almost automatic wah sounding sound. <laughs> And 
what about the uh, the neck in the middle here? Good, but not as good as the other. Very nice sound, a lot of extra reverb on that. And then my last preset that I've messed with is the Marshall Super Lead. Doesn't sound as gainy as the rest of these, but does have a nice, you know, distorted tone. Kind of reminds me of Saturn a little bit. Guitar's getting a little bit out of tune, probably because I'm leaning back. But I didn't realize I had that turned all the way down. But uh, you can hear all the different tones in that as well. Okay, so try out uh, different sounds of your own. Try to find ways to evolve in your own playing and in your own tones. And that really made a huge world of difference to me, like I said in the first video, that when you realize the amp is one of the main touchstones or cornerstones, foundations, of some of your favorite guitar heroes' tone, uh, it really opens up a new world. And especially when you have, like I said, PV makes a lot of these amps, so they know what they're supposed to sound like, and it's like having the actual amps. I was, I'm very surprised and pleased at how much these sound like tube amps. And so they are definitely a, a forerunner and a leader in tone. And not only that, I like the fact that you can mess with cabinets, but not only that, you can different mess with a different placement of the mics, you can uh, have different uh, mic combinations and mic emulators, and you can even arrange the, the access or the axis and the proximity and the gain of the mic. There's a lot of tweaking uh, involved in this little program. I encourage you to check that out. It's uh, called PV Revalver 4, and there's two packages. Uh, one of them is a producer pack, which is $99, and the other one is some other pack, which is $49. But even with the producer back that I've got now, a lot of these are demos. So you can actually go to the amp store and, you know, buy your own little amp, you know, modulators, not modulators, but amp models and different things like that. Uh, but, you know, experiment with different tone and, you know, pedals and things like that. Go to a guitar center, go to a, a place that sells guitars, electric guitars, and has a wide variety of amps. Sit down and play with them. Try to find something that's on your budget that you can work with. Um, and if you don't like, to, to me particularly, I don't really care for this tone. Um, this is the, like I said, the Michael, which is obviously a Marshall. Um, it says a 50 watt high gain rock and roll. Uh, it's got a master here. I'm not sure if that's the gain or if I don't really see a gain knob. So let's see. I've got a volume, so that can't be the, that's got to be the gain, the master does. So let's see what it does. <laughs> That's the, that's the master volume. If I turn the volume down though. Well, I may just leave that there. So let's go ahead and update that to whatever that is, just hit the preset and tell it to save over it. And now it will be super lead. Um, another thing that I said is a lot of the gain, if you can if you can notice my finger squeaks here. 
you don't hear a lot of that with a lot of professional players because a lot of professional players have a low gain on their amp. That way they can engage a pedal to get a lot more volume and a lot more oomph in their amp and their sound. And then when they disengage the pedal, they're back to almost zero sound. Okay, so a low gain will help with that and then you can boost that with an overdrive pedal or with a distortion pedal. I'm liking that even better now. Um, so just because somebody else plays a Marshall or somebody else plays something else, if, if you like that tone, then by all means go for it. But if, it, if you don't like it, don't go out and buy it just because so-and-so plays it. Find something that works with you, that resonates with you, that you can uh, enjoy playing for as long as you have that amp. Because for the most part, uh, if you're anything like me, I just play at home just to be playing at home, and I, I take my amps to uh, private lessons. But I'm not like a gigging musician or anything like that. Now, you might be, and you might be able to afford that kind of uh, amp purchase. But for me, I know I'm going to be stuck with the same amp for a pretty good while. Uh, recently upgraded to the PB Viper P VIP 1, I think it is. I think it was like last Christmas when I upgraded to that. And I had the other one before that for like f five years or so. Um, so, I mean, I stick with amps for a while. If, they, if, they, if they're not broke, don't worry about fixing them. And the main reason I switched to this one is because the tones were a little bit better in some areas. And it also has uh, the acoustic where you can plug in your acoustic or your bass guitar. It has multi-instrument capabilities. So, but uh, I'm rambling on that. Let's go to a couple more presets and then we'll call it a night, like I said. I'm gonna to go to the uh, free bank here and pull out, let's see, return to the 80s. That's one I've seen earlier and I tried out on the last video. And we'll see what that sounds like real quick. Oh, mercy, turn that down a little bit. Rough on my ears. Okay, so like I said, there's all kinds of presets here. So I can go to another one and go to first impressions here, see what dark lemonade is. That might be pretty cool. That's going to blow us away. Think careful. Oh, yeah. A little too fizzy for me. You don't really care for that one. So let's go to the last one here uh, that I, I tried to do on the last one and it didn't work. It's called Made of Nylon. Listen to how awesome this sounds. It's no amp, but it has an emulator on there that makes it sound like nylon string. Now, I love this one. It sounds really cool. Have a listen here. Oh, yeah. Don't that sound amazing? That was using the double verb here, double C verb. And with that, I'd just like to say I apologize for the last video, the last mess up I had. Thank you so much for watching and for being patient with uh, this mishap. Um, I guess I'll just have to do it this way from now on. 
uh, much to my dismay, but uh, uh, I guess if I have to do any emulations like this, I'll probably do it through my Digitech because it is actually going in to the uh, audio interface from a multi-effects processor versus going into the interface and then the multi-effects processor is in the computer. There's no way for it to get to that and to um, get it back out, so to speak, uh, to the recording devices. So that became a hassle, but it's okay. Everything's fine now. This is over with and done. And I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video, whatever that may be. Guys, we'll talk to you later. God bless.